Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 15 of MSK Unknown Case Series. The two images that I have here are a coronal T1 fat sat weighted image of the shoulder and a sagittal T1 fat sat weighted image of the shoulder. This is an MR arthrogram, so we've injected fluoroscopic gadolinium contrast within the joint space under fluoroscopy, and then they've had an MRI examination. That's what this bright signal here is here within the joint space. And this is done to distend the glenohumeral joint so we can see the intraarticular structure. So we have a coronal T1 fat set here and a sagittal T1 fat set image here. And the question that I have for you guys is, what type of labral tear are we seeing here? Is this a bank cart tear, a perthes type of labral tear, a slap tear, or an alpsa lesion? And I guess this will test your understanding of the alphabet suit of shoulder imaging. So I'll give you guys a moment to reflect on this image here. And I also have a follow-up question with regard to the same image. What predisposes to this type of labral tear? Is it shoulder dislocation, overhead throwing, infection, or a triceps traction injury? What predisposes to this type of labral tear that you're seeing on this MRI arthrogram study? So if we take a look here, this is a slap tear. This is a superior labral anterior to posterior tear. If we take a look here at the sagittal image, this is a supraspinatus muscle, infraspinatus, teres minor, subscap here. So this, this area here is anterior because this is the subscapularis. The lung would be right here. This is posterior. And this circle here is the glenoid process of the scapula. And this black circle around the glenoid is the labrum. This is a static stabilizer of the shoulder. And it's dark and hypointense on all MRI sequences. But notice here, anterior superiorly, there's a defect in the labrum here. And this is just a normal variant known as a sublabral foramen. It's usually around the one o'clock to three o'clock position. If this is a clock face with this being 12 o'clock, this being six, and we pretend this side is three and this side is nine, this is between one and three o'clock. And it just means that there's congenital uh, unattachment of the labrum here from one to three o'clock. It can also be partially unattached and that will be called a perilabral recess. But this is a sublabral foramen. But the finding that we're seeing here is this bright contrast signal within the substance of the labrum that's running anterior to posterior. It's along the superior labrum because it's at the 12 o'clock or you know 11 o'clock to one o'clock position and it's running anterior to posterior, making this a slap tear or a superior labral anterior to posterior tear. A bank cart tear would be at the three to six o'clock position along the anterior inferior limb. It would be right here, but notice that there's no contrast within the substance of this labrum along the anterior inferior quadrant of the labrum. Right? And it would be detached from the glenoid. A perthes lesion would also be a complete labral tear at this location, but it would be completely detached from the underlying periosteum here. It would, be, it would just be a tear here, but the labrum would still be attached to the glenoid process. And then an alpha lesion or anterior labral periosteal sleeve avulsion would also be at the three to six o'clock position. Right? It would be a labral tear, but then the labrum would be you know, displaced inferiorly and medially but it would still be attached to the underlying periosteum. So that's the difference between these four types of labral tears. And of course, what predisposes to this type of labral tear is overhead throwing. In fact, in baseball pitchers, it was described, this type of tear was described in baseball pitchers who did a lot of overhead throwing. Uh, a shoulder dislocation is seen more commonly in a bank cart tear along the anterior inferior labrum. And you know, these type of tears are usually related to biceps traction injury, not triceps traction injury. Usually when there's force extension, when the forearm is in flexion, that's the mechanism of injury to a lot of slap tears. So this here is an axial T1 facet image through the, in the same patient through the labrum or here superiorly. This is a sublabral frame I was talking about where the labrum is unattached to the glenoid. So that's why there's a contrast cleft between the triangular labrum and the glenoid. But you can see that there's signal or contrast within this posterior labrum in this slap tear, right? So, you know, we see, you know, bright signal within the joint as it should be, but then it's going into the substance of this triangular dark structure, which is the posterior labrum. This is anterior, this is posterior. So a slap tear means superior labral anterior to posterior. The, the tear propagates in an anterior to posterior direction. There are actually up to 10 different types of labral slap tears. I don't think it's beneficial to go in through all of them, you know, at a resident level to pass the core exam. You know, I think just knowing that a slap tear exists is probably sufficient for you to diagnose on, on the examination. You know, this is again related to overhead throwing or baseball pitching is a, is a uh, common scenario for patients that have slap tears. Again, it's a biceps traction injury, uh, typically with the uh, extent, force extension when the forearm is in flexion. 
And again, always be careful of labral variance. They typically happen at the one to three o'clock quadrant. You know, you can have a sublabral foramen, as in this case, this is not a tear, just a normal variant. This can be, there can be, it can be partially unattached. So that's known as a superior recess or a perilabral recess. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this great case of a slap tear. We're going to do another super high yield great case next week. See you then and stay tuned. Thank you for your attention.